when did the deal come? Mm, super late. Way later. Way later. So after 7 One Forever, we started dropping um, like a song every Friday. Just because SoundCloud was like my platform, you know, it's when SoundCloud was just exploding. And um, <clears throat> that worked out for a while. We did like this thing called Forever Fridays. And then we put them into seasons, like release a song every Friday for like 10 weeks. And then um, the fans just kept growing. Everyone just kept listening, kept streaming, just kept building. We uh, piled it all up into like a season one. And then, um, yeah, it wasn't didn't feel like the right time to drop a second album. So we just continued to do a season two of the Forever Friday thing because um, we were on tour so much. Like I went on tour with Post Malone, went on my own headlining tour, sold it out, went on tour with SOB, RBE, went on tour with Black Bear. Uh, when I came back from my tour, g Easy was like, you wanna come with me to Europe? So I went to Europe with g Easy. That was one of the greatest times of my life. So much fun. And then um, I actually signed the deal while I was in Europe with g Easy. So it was a long, it was probably over a year of negotiating with different labels and just trying to get the most out of what I wanted. So I didn't want to sign a deal that everyone else was signing. I wanted a, a really good deal. I didn't want to give up everything. I just wanted to give up royalties, basically. And, um, yeah, it took a long time. But I guess me going on tour with Jeezy in Europe and everything just blowing up the way that it was. I had this smoke and drive record that was going crazy, even though it never got cleared. So that's basically what led me into the deal. And then I did the deal, signed in Europe, came back and finishing up the rest of the album because I thought I had most of it done already. Just to find out all the label issues that go on, you know? Um, and people not wanting to let you release music and stuff like that. And it was definitely rough in the beginning, especially too, because just adapting to like not being able to do whatever we wanted anymore as independent artists. And um, yeah, it just was like a long drawn out process of them giving excuses as to why I couldn't drop my album till it got to like, you don't have enough features, you don't have enough streams, like you don't have enough likes on your Instagram, like this, that, and the other thing. And it was just like, kind of just like depressing, you know? It's like, damn, is this me? And then album, album date comes, finally gave me the album date. I got all these features on there, I got the streams up, got the likes up, did everything that they wanted basically. And then the album date came and they didn't drop the album just for me to find out it was about money, so. What do you mean about money? It's too much money, like I signed for too much, I didn't recoup that already, they had to pay me a bunch more money when turning the album in. They huh. didn't want to do that, doesn't make sense. They signed, they got uh, Smoke and Drive, which was they thought, like, they thought that was the one, you know, they were gonna make all the money in the world off this one record and they couldn't even get it cleared. So that definitely put a hole in the whole process. What was the sample on Smoke and Drive that they couldn't clear? Island in the Sun by Weezer. Okay. And we had talked to we had talked to Weezer the lead the lead singer and he was really cool about it. And I understand where he was coming from. He had lost his father from a, a drunk driving accident. So he has like a zero tolerance policy for driving under the influence. And I respected that. I'm like, you know what? Like I changed all the lyrics in my verse, took all the drug references out. But at the time, we weren't able to get Black Bear to recut his. So um, it just didn't really work out. And then he just let us basically like keep it out, and we just didn't make money off of it. OK. And you were assigned to Columbia, but it was through G-Eazy? No. Oh, OK. I was just on tour with G-Eazy when tour. I okay. did Got the it. OK. In Columbia, you got like Beyonce. <laughs> Yeah, you got all types of people. You, can, you got the big dogs. Yeah, that that's a, a legendary label. Yeah. And, you know, they're already making a lot of their money through these giant artists. So I guess you being a newer artist, they're not really prioritizing you in the same way. 100%. Especially when they didn't get that record. So eventually you got off the label. Mm -hmm. What did that take? Great team. Great lawyers. Maybe a little bit of guilt on the label side. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I was praying. I'm going to say it's God. Okay. Fate. Did you have to give a bunch of money back? Mm, no. No? Not so you all. got to keep what they gave you, the advance? I mean, I gave them the records. I did everything they asked me to do. They didn't get the record cleared. That's on them. Got it. To, well, I went to turn my album in. You guys don't want to pay. That's an amazing album. You guys don't want to pay me to turn my album in? Fine. Don't pay me. Let me leave with the music and release it. So you get to keep the advance and you get to walk away with the music? 
Mm-hmm. The music is just for Koopa Boy. Right, you got some gangsters on your team. <laughs> God. I got angels on my team. I feel you.